Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to show you a project that I've been working on. I have a number of anime in my collection that came out on DVD and haven't received a Blu-ray release yet. As a big fan of animation and art, it really hurts me that they haven't done any kind of upscaling or any kind of a remaster for some of these shows. So what I've been doing is I've been using a program called Topaz Video Enhance AI. Basically what this program does is it uses AI and machine learning in order to figure out what a higher resolution frame would look like in these videos. So I run the video through this program, which then spits out all the frames individually after deinterlacing and upscaling it to HD. At this point, it's just a folder full of frames. So we have to use a program called FFmpeg in order to stitch those all back into a video. But then at that point, it's just a video with no audio. So we have to then use a different program in order to remux that all back into one video that has the video feed as well as the audio tracks. Now you could just leave it there and have a full video and be done with it. But something I'd rather do is take the subtitle tracks and make those look HD as well. So I thought today I'd go ahead and take you guys along for the ride of what it looks like to run through this process. Let's get started. All right, so first we'll take a look at the Topaz Video Enhance AI program. So what this program is essentially doing is it's taking the old footage, it is deinterlacing it, and then after deinterlacing, it is also upscaling the video. So currently it's going from a 480i source, we're doing Slayers right now, up to a 1080p source. Or to be more specific, uh, since this is a 4x3 release, it is actually going up to 1440 by 1080, which is 1080p for four by three sources. So that's what this is doing right now. And essentially this works by dragging and dropping the original source into this program and then running it. And it is actually spitting out individual frames for us. So if we go into here, this is the episodes that I've done so far. So this is the episode we're currently working on, episode 21. So this is actually spitting out individual frames. And so what we'll end up doing is after this step, we'll actually use FFmpeg to stitch all these frames back together into a video. As you can see, this is a fairly intensive process. Um, we can see down here that it's taking between uh, 0.14 and it looks like it spikes to, to 0.18 every once in a while um, seconds per frame. So that's less than 10 frames per second if we if we look at that. Um, it's using our GPU to power that. So we can look into here and we can see our 1080 Ti uh, is working pretty hard to get that going. So yeah, it's a fairly intensive process. So I'll go ahead and speed this up so that we can get to the next step in our process. All right, so now that this is done, we can go back into our folder where all of the frames were being created. So this is for episode 21. We go back into here. Here's our episode 21. And here's all of our frames. So we've got over 80,000 frames here. Um, the eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that up here, when we look at the input, so the source, actually only had 40,279 frames. So you might be wondering why we're getting 80,500 in the output. So the reason that is, is that this particular AI model that Topaz Video Enhance AI is using actually doubles the frames. So because it's an interlaced source and the way that interlaced rendering works, it actually renders a single frame as two separate fields at a time. So progressive renders the entire frame all at once, whereas interlaced renders those frames either top field first or bottom field first and then the other. So what this model is doing is it's essentially recreating each of those frames as full frames. And then later when we stitch these frames back together, 
we'll set it so that overall it's going to be the same time. So it's not going to be sped up. It's not going to be elongated, despite the fact there being extra frames. We're going to set the frame rate so that it does play back at the same speed as it would have if it were just sitting at that 40,000 frames. So the way we do this next part is we find our frames and we're going to need to open up our command prompt. And so an easy way to do this without having to navigate to a folder by using, you know, the CD command, we can just click this icon up here and then type in CMD. And that opens up our command prompt already with this folder in mind. I've been doing this on a couple of episodes already, so I'm just going to go to one of these other windows and we're going to press the up arrow key to go to our last used command. I'm going to highlight this and then I'm going to right click once that copies and then I'm going to right click again in this command prompt window and that pastes that in. So we're going to go back here and I'm going to change the name of this to episode 21. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is running on the cores and threads of your CPU. This is not GPU. So we can see if we look into here on the CPU, we can see that this is going to be pushing just about all of our threads. So we'll go ahead and wait for that to finish up and then we'll move on to our next step. All right, so now that that's finished, we can see that this did indeed generate a video for us out of those frames. Looking at it, we can see here that it's showing at 59.94 frames per second, and it is our 1440 by 1080, so that's our HD 4 by 3 and we can see it's 22 minutes, 24 seconds, so that is the length of an episode. So we can jump in here and take a look at it just to confirm. Uh, again, at this point, the episode is not going to have any audio in it because we've just taken it from frames, which frames do not have audio, and we simply stitch them back together so it is a moving picture now, but there's no audio yet in it. We're gonna add the audio back in a future step. So we can see here that it's working fine, and it's running at the frame rate that you would expect it to run at. Through Again, I just wanna show that it is the entire episode. So here we are at the ending theme, and then it goes to the next time on Slayers. Um, so that's where the video is gonna end for us. So now that we have that, the next thing that we could do would be using our MKV tool nix. So the next thing I would do, we'd put episode 21 in there. This is our upscaled episode 21. As you can see, as I had mentioned, this is just the video. We also have a few tags in there. We'll go ahead and leave those be. And then we would go and grab our actual episode. So the original episode being the episode 21 source file. Go and throw that in there. So here we can see we have the original video. We want to drop that. Here we have the two audio choices. I prefer the show in Japanese, so I click on that and I go ahead and make that the default track. Then we have an English, and then here are VOB subs. These are the subtitles from the DVD. So this one's going to be the signs, and this is going to be the full dialogue in the show in addition to the signs. So we're going to move that up. But the only downside to using this is that it's going to look like it's from a DVD. So if we take a look at this episode, We're and we pull up the subtitle on this, we can see that it's this very blocky font. Now that makes a lot of sense because again, this show was created um, and released on DVD and the show doesn't currently have any kind of a Blu-ray release, at least here in America. And which is, you know, ultimately the whole purpose behind my going through this whole process to make it HD. But when you have the show displaying in HD, but then you have these subtitles that are looking like they're from DVDs, it just doesn't match very well. And so in order to fix that problem, we're going to use subtitle edit. So subtitle edit is a freeware program that we enter and it basically reads through all of the subtitle file 
and allows us to export it. So this is currently episode 26. I finished doing this today, but I'll go ahead and show you. So then we do export. We'll export it as a Blu-ray SUP. And we'll want to set that video res to our resolution. And we can see it's going to be this font. So it's going to be a much higher resolution font. It's going to be much more easy to read. And that's going to be over the entirety of the episode. So then we do export all lines. We can go ahead and have that replace that. Not a big deal. So it pulls that and it places them in a folder. And so here's the episode 26 that we created just now. Uh, but again, we're doing 21 as our example. So we'll drag that here into our MKV tools. And so here's going to be our new one. The HDMV PGS is the file format that Blu-rays use for their subtitles. So we're going to drag that up here. We're going to go ahead and elect to not even include the DVD version. And we'll call this our English track. And then for language, we'll go ahead and select that to be English as well. And we want to have this default also because we're going to be defaulting to the Japanese language. So we want to have the English subtitles for that dialogue being selected by default as well. So then here, we tell it which folder to send this to. So we put this in our complete folder. Again, this is episode 21. So I actually haven't run it yet for episode 21. So this is uh, the first time we'll run that. And start multiplexing. So this is, again, taking our audio list file that was upscaled, combining it with the audio from the original source file and then replacing the subtitle from the source file with our newly created, much better looking subtitle file. So now that that's finished, that went ahead and put it back into our complete folder, uh, which is our upscale complete. So here's our episode 21. We'll go ahead and open that up. And we can see that we're having much higher resolution uh, subtitles as well. And I know I have the volume turned off, but I'll go ahead and show you that the audio uh, is there as well. So we can see that it defaulted to our Japanese audio track. And in the event that I wanted to switch and, and hear the English track, I could do that as well. And then the subtitles, we can see that the original signs track is there too. I didn't elect to do a subtitle redo for the signs just because I'm not really going to be watching the show in English much. So since uh, my preferred way to watch will be the Japanese dialogue, I really only did the subtitles for the dialogue uh, for that reason. So yeah, there you go. That's all it really is. It's a fairly easy process overall. You know, it does seem like there are a lot of steps, but once you kind of understand how each of them work and once you've done them a few times, it's a really pretty simple process. So there you have it. That's the whole process. And we have to do that for every single episode that we choose to enhance and upscale. I know I kind of ran through all those steps pretty quickly and didn't have time to go in depth into each tool. So if you guys are interested, please let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make another video going more in depth into any of those steps. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.